If you're looking for recipes online and you are trying to be healthy this year, there's a good chance that you'll get a lot of chicken breast recipes. While I don't hate chicken breast, I just really dislike it. Um, I do believe that it is a great protein because it is really high in protein and quite low in fat. But I think more importance should be given to this little fella right here, the chicken thigh. <laughs> the chicken thigh over the chicken breast? Well, number one, it just tastes better because it has a slightly higher fat content. Two, you have a really nice piece of skin on it that's nice and wide, that's easy to crisp up, but it's also very easy to remove if you want to remove that extra bit of fat and you don't need it. Um, and three, it's just so forgiving. If you overcook this, you've really overdone it. Like you've cooked it 30 minutes past the point it was supposed to be cooked in versus a chicken breast, if you go two to five minutes over, you're done. You're gonna be left with this dry, brick of chicken and no one wants to eat a brick of chicken. So it's a type of cut that you can really do a lot with. It's very versatile and today I'm going to show you a very simple way on how to make a perfect crispy chicken thigh with nothing more than just salt and a little bit of oil and then I'm going to show you a stew version and then a chicken thigh version with some sauce. The first thing I like to do is place these on a sheet tray, skin side down on kitchen paper. This goes into the fridge until you're ready to cook them at least an hour. This extra step also dries them out further. And we know dryness is the essence of crispiness. I'm sure Zoolander said that at one point. When ready, take them out of the fridge, pat them dry, and season with salt. Get a cast iron or stainless steel pan on medium heat and spread a thin layer of oil on it. Place this skin side down, bring the heat down to medium low. I like to press the chicken down to get a crispier skin, so I'll just place a plate or a metal cover on the chicken and then place some kind of weight that'll keep its balance right on it. Depending on the size of your chicken, this will take anywhere from seven to 10 minutes. After that, flip it. Now, you can either cook this on low, still on the stove, until you get an internal temperature of about 73 to 75 degrees Celsius, or you can put this in the oven at 200 degrees until you get that same internal temperature. Rest for five minutes before cutting. I don't know if you can hear that, but that is as dry as it gets perfectly blistered and bubbled, exactly how you want chicken skin to be. So the idea is nothing is important if you have crispy skin, but undercooked chicken or dry chicken, right? So we want something nice and juicy. You'll probably be able to see this in the second camera. As I press it down, you have clear juices that come out, and that's how you know it's still juicy, but perfectly cooked. Um, this looks absolutely delicious. Mmm. See? Chicken cooked like this, you don't even need sauce or anything, just like this with a little bit of salad, boom, you're good. Healthy eating actually tastes good. So if you wanna build more flavor, there's a Filipino dish that I absolutely love that's called chicken afritada. I'm gonna be making it my version today, just really building a depth of flavor that sometimes I feel we kind of take shortcuts and don't really take time to build. This version's really smoky and deep and just absolutely delicious. You're gonna love it. You'll need some soy sauce, tomato puree, fish sauce, turmeric, paprika, a red bell pepper, three cloves of garlic, three potatoes, four medium-sized carrots, one onion, one cup of cherry tomatoes, some dried chilies, I'm using a guajillo pepper here, honey, butter, and 600 grams of chicken thighs. 
chop, slice, and prep everything. In a cast iron pan drizzled with olive oil, cook your chicken skin side down for about three minutes on high before doing the same thing on the other side for two minutes. We're just looking for some color here. Take them out and then throw in your onions, cook them until transparent. Add your garlic, paprika, and turmeric, toast this in the middle. Cook for two minutes before adding your tomatoes. Wait until they get slightly blistered and then you can start squashing them with your feelings. Add your chicken, chili, bay leaves, soy sauce, fish sauce, and tomato puree. Mix this all together. Add some chicken stock until it almost covers the chicken, about three fourths of the way. Simmer and cover for about 20 minutes on low heat. After 20 minutes, open it up and throw in your potatoes and carrots for a further 20 minutes covered. Now, this is my little touch, which is not traditional at all. Put this in text on the video, not traditional at all. Trigger warning. Five minutes before taking it off the fire, you should have a nice thick sauce. And at this point, I like to add a teaspoon of honey and a tablespoon of butter. It just makes the whole thing so much more unctuous. When it's ready, serve with some chopped parsley and some lemon rind for a little bit of needed freshness. Finally, pulling more on the French heritage of a uh, chicken chasseur or poulet aux champignons. This is basically um, chicken thighs with like a really nice and thick creamy mushroom sauce without using any cream. Try it, it's gorgeous. Same as the last recipe, get a pan out, heat with oil, and cook the chicken on both sides until brown. Uh, make sure these are seasoned with salt, by the way. Once ready, set them aside. Add your mushrooms in batches until they're all nice and brown. Add them all back in with your red onions and garlic. While cooking, you can always add a little bit more oil since mushrooms tend to really absorb oil quite quickly. After about five minutes, toss in one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. Let that cook off for about one minute and just like get most of the acidity out of there before adding a third cup of chicken broth, a teaspoon of mustard, and a can of drained and washed butter beans. Then in terms of dairy, you can add whole milk, cream, up to you. I'm just using some oat milk because that's what I had in the fridge, uh, some salt and pepper, and some fresh oregano. Since we are using oat milk here, we need to add about half a teaspoon of cornstarch or potato starch uh, mixed in with a third cup of chicken broth into the sauce to just really thicken it and give it more volume. If you choose to use milk or cream, you can actually skip this part altogether. Once nice and thick, add your chicken back in and let that simmer for five minutes. Before serving, finish with some salt, some pepper if needed, and some chopped parsley.